Hi everyone, welcome back to Digital Dreambox. Today we have a subscriber request and it's how to make some circular terrain. Now we're going to create a low poly planet. However, there's nothing stopping you from uh, creating a high poly planet if you choose to. This should be a really fun one though. So let's jump right in and check it out. All right, so this is a two-parter in which we'll be making a low poly planet. We'll be looking at how to get the initial shape how to use remesh to give us more topology for sculpting, and then finally, how to use Maya's mash feature to easily set dress the planet. Now let's jump right in. All right, let's start. Now we're going to make a planet, and the first instinct we might have would be to use the sphere. However, the topology spread on the sphere isn't so great for what we're going to do. Let me just show you. So here's the sphere, and if you look, we have large quads in the midsection, and as they approach to the top and the bottom, they start getting smaller, and eventually they turn into triangles. Let's just get rid of this. What we're going to use instead will be the platonic solid. That's this one up here. Add that to your scene, and now let's scale this up. Open up your channel box, and we'll scale it 10, in the X, the Y, and the Z. And this is what we'll use to make the planet. Open up your attribute editor, and you'll wanna locate your polyplatonic one input. That's this one over here. And if you look, it's actually already set to quads. So if you were planning to just do some sculpting, all you would need to do is really up the subdivisions and you can start sculpting right away. Um, just because sculpting with quads is um, behaves a little nicer than triangles. However, we're making a low poly planet that will be mostly triangulated in the end anyhow. So let's turn it into triangles now. For the subdivision mode, there's a drop down. We'll change it to triangles. There we go. And now we wanna think about the look we want for this planet uh, and give it the triangle density to match it. So I want a density of somewhere between probably four and six. However, if you take a look at the arrangement of these triangles, you can see that it's fairly geometric. It has a bit of a mathematical feel to it, and this certainly could look good for some uh, planet styles, but I would like something a little more organic for my planet, and I want the triangles to be uh, more irregular. So what we're going to do is increase the subdivisions and then reduce it so that our triangles are a little more random. So let's do that. Over here, our slider is dragged up all the way already, but what we can do is go into this box and input a higher number. And I'm gonna choose 10. And now what we'll wanna do is select the mesh, go up to our mesh tab, and then down here we have a reduce option. Click on that, and right away you can see those triangles have been displaced a little bit. They're much more regular, and now we can drag this percentage slider up. It'll start pulling away some of those extra edges and we'll have a density closer to what we had before. However, you might notice something. As I drag this percentage slider up, and depending on the values you chose for your own sphere, uh, sometimes you get these congested areas. And even if I drag the percentage slider up further, it almost doesn't go away. And in fact, it makes it look worse. So I wanna show you how to get around this if you ever encounter this for yourself. First, let's lower the percentage down to maybe around 70. And what we're going to do is remesh this. So select the mesh, go up to your mesh tab again, and down here we have a remesh option. I'm just gonna reset this, or make sure it's reset. And then we'll click remesh. And what Maya has done ha is it's evened out those triangles, and we have a max edge length of, at least for me, of 0.212. However, we can increase this. So if I drag the slider, it goes to two, and we can increase it further by inputting a number here, and I'm gonna choose four. And four gets me pretty close to what we had before. And next, what we wanna do is look for those problematic areas where the triangles can be um, pinching a bit, right? And we just need to increase the collapse threshold a bit, and it'll fix some of those areas. There we go. And we just wanna orbit around a mesh and look for all those areas that um, can be a little bit congested. And I'm gonna basically make this about 45. There we go. And next, let's 
inspect the mesh further. So select your uh, sphere, go up to mesh display, and we'll harden these edges. And let's take a look. I just want to orbit around our um, sphere. And what we're looking for are any vertices that might be too far out of place that create unwanted shadow areas. But I think this looks pretty good. So we'll go with this. All right. So already we have a very cool looking shape. It has a bit of a lunar form to it. So that's great. Um, however, we're making a planet. So let's create some continents for our planet. And to do that, what we're going to do is select a bunch of faces that will extrude out for those land masses. So select your mesh. And over here on the left where your toolbox is, the third one down is your paint selection tool. Select that one. And let's go into face mode. So I'm going to hold down the right mouse button, go into face mode. And the paint selection tool can paint faces, um, vertices, edges. And we're in face mode. So all we need to do is click on the mesh and it'll start grabbing those faces for us. Very convenient. We don't have to hold down the shift key. And then if we want to uh, remove any faces we didn't want painted, hold down the control key and paint over it again. And then finally, to change the brush size, just hold down B on the keyboard and the left mouse button, click and drag, and you can increase or decrease that. And what I'm going to do is paint out some areas that I want to be my um, continents. And you can do the same for yours, um, create whatever you like. However, um, keep in mind that we'll be placing some objects on here later. So you'll probably want a good amount of um, um, faces selected for the landmass. And then depending how long this takes, I'll probably just fast forward it a bit. All right, so I've selected the faces I want to extrude out. And as you can tell, this is not Earth. However, you could make a low poly version of Earth if you wanted to. Just use a reference and um, paint out those continents. Um, now let's extrude this. So open up your modeling toolkit. You can get to your extrude option from over here. However, I prefer to use the marking menu. So I'm going to hold down shift and the right mouse button and choose extrude. And now let's give this a bit of thickness. Probably going to go with somewhere between 0.7 and 0.8. So maybe um, 0.75 probably works. There we go. And then what we can do is bring in the shoreline a little bit as well. And to do that, we just need to increase the offset. And I'll probably make this maybe like a 0.3. All right, so next, while we have these faces still selected, um, let's give it a color. So hold down the right mouse button, we'll assign a new material. And I'm gonna choose a Lambert. And then if you, the material properties don't show up right away here, what we can do is hold down the right mouse button again and choose material attributes. And now let's give this, um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna make for the color for the final thumbnail, but for now I'm, I'll make this green. It could be like a very strange alien planet by the end. But yeah, I think this is okay, so let's see here. We'll make it this green, that should be fine. And then let's uh, give this inside section a different color as well. So I'm gonna select this face, hold down shift, double click this one, and that'll grab that row. And we'll do the same here. And then over here as well. All right, and then again, hold down the right mouse button, choose assign new material, give it another Lambert, and this one will make a lighter shade of green. All right, and then um, I wanna make this area water. And to grab these faces without having to individually select those, I'll show you how you can do that. Open up your hypershade, which is this ball over here. And here's our hypershade window. And here is Lambert one, which is this um, these faces over here. So hold down the right mouse button, choose select objects in the initial shading group, and then hover over your sphere Hold down the right mouse button, and we're going to assign a new material and give it another Lambert. There we go, and that'll be Lambert 4, which is over here. So we can change the color from here. And I'm just going to make this um, 
an ocean color. So something like this for now should be fine. All right. And now we have uh, some color for our planet. Uh, something to keep in mind is we gave this three materials, but if you were taking this into the game engine, um, later on we would probably want to UV unwrap this and maybe just give it one material. All right. So now um, what I want to do next is maybe um, just change the look of this a little bit. So what I want to do is grab some of these vertices on um, these edges here and maybe bring them in a little bit to make it a little more random. So um, what I'm going to do is just grab a vertex, go into my move tool, and I'm going to move some of these um, over here. So this will probably take a bit of time, so I'll probably fast forward this part as well. All right, so I pulled some of those vertices back and it looks a little more interesting now. Um, next, we may want to give this some extra terrain and there's a couple of different ways you can go about this. You could make the terrain separately and I do have a tutorial on how to make terrain if you want to check that out. Or we could try and remesh this. And what I found is when I try to remesh the whole object, it can be a little bit buggy. So I had some success separating some of these sections and remeshing it. So I'll show you that process um, and we'll give it a shot. So let's select the mesh. First, open up your channel box. We have a bit of history here. So let's um, delete that history and we'll freeze those transformations. And then let's open up our outliner and we'll name this for now. Call it Planet One. And what we're going to do is we're going to make um, a duplicate just as a backup in case anything goes wrong. So select your mesh, press Ctrl D to duplicate that, and then we'll select Planet 1 and press H on the keyboard to hide it. And we'll work with Planet 2. I'm going to close the outliner again. And now what I want to do is pick a continent that has a good amount of space, and we're going to remesh it to give it, give it some more topology, and then we'll sculpt maybe some mountains on it or something. So um, select your mesh, and I'm gonna go into edge mode, and we wanna grab this um, perimeter right here. So um, because these are triangles, we can't double click and grab that entire loop. So we'll need to manually go around and click and add to that selection. All right, that should be everything. So now let's detach these components. So hold down Shift and the right mouse button and choose Detach Components and hopefully we grabbed everything and it looks like we did, perfect. And now these are actually, um, it's already separated for us. If we go into face mode, one way to check is select any of these faces, just double click them. And if it just grabs that top section, we know we detached it. So let's go into object mode. And what I'm going to do is open up the modeling toolkit and we're going to separate this. So now we have this shell and this mesh as well. All right, so we only really need to work on this piece over here. So let's um, isolate it. And we want to remesh this to give it some more topology. So select the mesh, go up to the mesh tab again, and down here where the remesh option is, open up that option box. And I'm going to change this to custom and choose an edge length of about one. And then let's click remesh. And there you go, it worked for me and hopefully it'll work for you as well. Um, next, what we want to do is decrease this uh, max edge length so that we have um, smaller triangles to work with for the sculpting. So I'm going to choose about maybe 0.2. There we go. 0.2 should be pretty good. We could go lower, but I think that should be fine. Um, all right. So now um, let me give you a quick rundown of how to sculpt this. So select your mesh. First, let's delete this history again. Otherwise, sometimes the sculpting will lag, so we'll delete that history. And then go to your sculpting shelf. And I'm gonna choose the first brush, which is the lift brush. And how this works is to change the brush size, hold down B on the keyboard, click and drag, and you'll increase or decrease the size of the brush. Um, if you can't see 
the brush right away. Sometimes it's already really large. So what you can do is hold down B and the middle mouse button and click and drag, and it'll increase that brush size from the zero value or the center. And if we want to uh, change the intensity of the brush, so the strength of it, hold down M plus the left mouse button and drag, and you can increase or decrease the strength. And again, if you don't see that right away, just hold down uh, M plus the middle mouse button and click and drag, and you'll increase from the center. And then how the lift brush works is, um, we just need to click on our mesh, and we can start building up that form. And if we wanna push in the form, just hold down Control, click and drag, and we'll push that back in. And there's a lot of brushes here that you can play with, but I'm gonna keep it pretty simple and just use the one brush. And then if you ever wanna smooth out your form a little bit, just hold down Shift, click and drag, and it'll soften um, those triangles up a little bit. All right, and what I'm going to do is you just essentially just sculpt in a mountainous area, and you can uh, sculpt yours, and then I'll see you when we're done. All right, so this is what I sculpted for the mountain. The next thing we'll wanna do is reduce this topology again. So first, let's go into our modeling uh, shelf again. We'll delete that history, if there is any there. And then let's exit isolation view. And now we'll select our mesh. So it's this one here. Um, and then go up to your mesh tab down here, click reduce. And it's gonna pull away 50%. Uh, and if we feel like there's more than 50% that can be pulled away again, what we can do is uh, select the mesh, just delete that history, go to the mesh tab again, and reduce. This way it doesn't lag so much when we drag this slider. And there we go. And I'm gonna turn on wireframe unshaded. And what we wanna do is not disturb uh, this perimeter. So let's drag up the percentage slider. And there we go. We want to make sure that these vertices connect with this other piece because we'll be merging them together again. Um, up here, we have a lot of topology. So I want to drag the slider up further and pull some away. I do want um, a little more there, but not that much more. So I'm going to bring this up. I'm actually going to hold down Control and click and drag. And I'm going to bring this up to about, let's see here maybe 90%-ish. Ooh, actually higher than that. Um, let's go with... All right, I'm gonna go with something like this. Um, it looks like, for me, 98.1. And now, um, let's double check though. We'll select the mesh, go up to the mesh display, because if we click off and turn off, turn off wireframe unshaded, it's a little bit soft looking. So I'm gonna select it, We'll harden these edges, just to have a peek. And I think that looks pretty good like that. Now we'll want to select both of these meshes and combine them again. So click your combine button. And again, you just wanna make sure that those vertices, right, connect. And now um, we'll wanna merge these vertices because if we go into vertex mode and box select a vertex, you can see that there's two there. And I don't remember if I told you um, how to get to the display window here. Um, sorry, not the display window, the poly count window. We'll go up to display, heads up display, and poly count. You can turn that on there. And now what we'll do is we'll select all these vertices and let's merge them. So hold down shift and the right mouse button, choose merge vertices and merge vertices. And if you look on the left, there's 396 selected, right? And if we let go, it's merged those, so perfect. And now this is one mesh again. All right, so that closes out this part of the tutorial. See you all in the next when we learn how to use Mai's MASH tool to set dress our planet. Until next time, this has been Digital Dreambox, your destination for game art.